You're watching us here on a very special episode of the Great Indian Freedom Fest. And today we're here at the Ikfai Business School in Mumbai to discuss with students the journey of financial freedom. To help them get their financial freedom, we have two eminent guests joining us as well. Anupam Gupta, he is the host of podcast Pesa Vesa and an author of the book The Wisest Owl on Personal Finance. And alongside that is Firoz Aziz, who is the deputy CEO of Anandrati Wealth Management as well. So without much further ado, let's go in and say hello to the students and the guests. You're watching us here on another edition of the Great Indian Freedom Fest. We are here at Ikfai Business School in Mumbai and everyone here wants to know the journey to financial freedom. Who better than leaders for financial freedom for us? We have Anupam Gupta, host of the great podcast, Pesa Vesa, one of the most heard podcasts on personal finance. And we have the champion of personal finance himself, Firoz Aziz, a regular on our channel, but more importantly, the deputy CEO of Anandrati. We've heard a lot of your advice through your podcast and uh, through your uh, you know, uh, appearances on our show. But what I really want to know today is your own life journey with finance and the way you all progressed through your careers. Okay, Mangala. Firstly, I feel old amongst all these youngsters. <laughs> you uh, don't look it. Uh, th <laughs> thankfully, ho hopefully you mean it. And I'm trying to match your amazing vibe and energy. Um, if you look at uh, how my life panned out, uh, was uh, I before I joined uh, AB and AMRO as a profession, I used to teach in a small city called Mysore. Okay, I come from a very modest background. My dad too went, went through a lot of financial ups and downs. Uh, so it implied that I had to uh, fend for myself and uh, try and earn money for my MBA and stuff. So I'd, I was teaching in an engineering college. Uh, so I had a very important decision to make. I was back then earning a lakh a month in a city like Mysore in the comfort of my homes. Uh, then I got a job which offered me just about 9,300 rupees per month. Wow. Uh, but I had to move a city for that. Uh, what am, why am I telling this is most obvious choices in life are wrong. Okay, if they are easy choices to make, then they may just be wrong. Uh, life does not give you such easy answers. Uh, so of course, I, I tried to figure out, did homework uh, as a private banker, what could I earn? Uh, I was told by my interviewer that a great private banker could earn a million dollars. Uh, so that was at that point in time for five crore rupees a year. I went and asked my best teacher in my saw and he said I earn three lakhs a month. So the disparity between if I became the best teacher, it would be 36 lakhs a year. If I became a best private banker, it would be four or five crores a year. The headroom for growth was significantly more, is why I take one tenth the salary and come to do a job in AB and AMRO as a temp staff. Then the second learning was that uh, you, uh, you may feel in an MBA college. Uh, that you're going to become a manager as soon as you step in the corporate world. And the reality will hit you because you're, you are doing a case study and presenting to the group saying that you're presenting to a board. That's the last case study I did, which was simulating a boardroom and I'm presenting as a, a <laughs> professional. When I came here, I didn't have a seat to sit. Uh, I used to loiter around the lobby. That was my job uh, to sell mutual funds. So second point I'm trying to make is reality is going to be different than your perception. Of course, uh, I did my profession and then I realized uh, that uh, my mind kept telling me, why am I working hard? Because I'm earning on just 9,400 rupees. That was the... Uh, natural human instinct, right? But then uh, I decided to triple my work. Wow. Uh, because if I brought my work down equal to what they pay me, then there is no scope for a correction. So I said, itni mehnat kar do, ki the disparity is visible. So they gave me a first rise was 400%. Oh, wow. You know, that's, it, it's a phenomenal story and I can't uh, 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 help but bring it back to the laws of economics, the demand supply law. He spoke about, you know, the equilibrium being a certain way. Imagine the work that you do is the supply and your worth is your demand. What he did was instead of bringing his supply down to the equilibrium, he put his supply curve so much higher that if his company did not match it with the equilibrium, another company would have hired him, given him a lot more money. Speaking about work itself, you had a wonderful career, wonderful profession as uh, you, you studied chartered accountancy, thereafter you were a great business analyst, helping people write books as well, conduct a lot of research. What prompted you to take that risk 
at the age that you did to start a podcast and then uh, did you expect it to be as uh, phenomenal as it has been right now? First of all, thanks for inviting me here, Mangalam. It's great to be here. It's a very young crowd and it's so much to learn from them, I would say. Um, my story is actually quite simple. I was obsessed with Harshad Mehta. That's okay. what took me to the stock markets. You know, So people who are seeing Scam 2003 now, I saw Harshad Mehta's Lexus in Narman Point as a, a college student. That pushed me to the markets, became an analyst, everything happened. And that kind of made me realize that my passion is writing. When I say content, I mean writing. And I was very lucky to work with Saurabh Mukherjee as a consultant when he was at Ambit. And in four years, write, I think, some of the best work we've done on the thematic side when, when Saurabh was at Ambit. After that, started the podcast, which just started just on a whim. There was no, you know, people talk about purpose, passion, and all that. This was nothing of that sort. Amit Doshi of IBM reached out. We started it, and here we are. You know, 400, 450 episodes are done. We are completely enjoying it. And well, that's it's incredible, you know. So one thing that stands out for both of you all is that what happened eventually was a function of very small changes, and there was no one Eureka moment. Usually what happens is that, you know, everyone thinks, oh, this is my passion, this is my Eureka moment, and this is the moment where I will make it big. Unfortunately, life isn't like that. That's about your life story. Tell us a little about your financial story. At what point did you realize that, you know, financial independence is important, and what were the steps that you all took to become financially independent? And what do you define as financial independence? See, uh, there are two uh, meanings to it, in my opinion. Uh, one is a numerical. Hmm. The other is emotional. Uh, financial freedom uh, numerically is very easy to compute. If I have all my expenditures possible, if I discount all my goals, I want to uh, retire, and this is the kind of money I would want, I would do a global tour, I will buy 10 cars, whatever be your goal. If you discount that value at a risk-free rate and find out the value of the, all your aspirations today, Let's assume that works out to be 20 crores, for example. But if you have more than 20 crores, then you are financially independent. Now, let's assume all my aspirations are worth 30 crores, but I'm at 3 crores. That implies that somebody has to cover this risk. If you have dependents, that's where insurance comes. Insurance gives you the freedom to get the freedom sooner. That's the point which is being made. Your thoughts? I don't know, yeah, you know, I, I wish Mukesh Ambani would tell me that he woke up one day and said that I want to be financially free. <laughs> I'm glad he did. We wouldn't have Geo, for example. Yeah. So I think if I were to define financial independence or financial freedom, whatever rocks their boat, I would say first find what you like to do, become really good at it, and money is an outcome. And then if that fits your framework of achieving that number, you've got your path, just go ahead and do it. Everyone loves the title of an investment banker, MD, CEO. Whatever work that people do, most of it, 90%, is not as fun and glamorous as the title would suggest. Tell me some of the really hard times that you've had to face when it came to work in general. Um, so I can tell you my story of how uh, glamour ripples me. Hmm. Okay, uh, Anything which is glamorous from outside, uh, you're attracted. When I, where we hire a lot of uh, MBAs and stuff, so there are about three, 400 of them we've hired in the last uh, four, five years. Uh, what I see is uh, investment banking is one profession which has the glamour where you're doing deals. Uh, I chose wealth management and that was still a decision for me to choose. Uh, wealth management is not so glamorous, actually not so glamorous. Investment banking, institutional research, buy side analysts especially are very glamorous finance roles. Wealth manager needs to find those 10 clients whom I'm, I know there are seven clients I manage, I do lunch, dinner. I earn a reasonable amount of money hmm. uh, for just having lunch, dinner with those seven guys. Uh, that's because I'm not rediscovering. So it's a relationship business. Okay, business-like profession, the most important thing that whatever you're doing in life, uh, you have to sell. He obviously had to write reports, sell that to someone for people to like it. You're sitting for interviews right now, placement interviews. You have to sell yourself as the best available commodity among the pool that there is. And he obviously sells uh, you know, his smarts and uh, the relationship that he has business-like is what these guys do. Let's, uh, you know, before we open the floor to these guys for questions, let's ask you some uh, quick fire ones. Your best financial decision according to you. Oh. Wow, okay, stocks, 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 and stocks, equities. 
my best financial decision is to not learn stocks and learn derivatives because there are so many people like him who oh. do stocks very well. Your worst financial decision? Oh boy, uh, a mutual fund bought in 2008 at the height of the this. I got wiped out at a time when I was quitting my job. I invested 10 lakhs, I got back 2 lakhs. I would count the sale decision wrong. I, I had 5 lakhs back then <laughs> and I sold it at 2 lakhs. Uh, I don't see the purchase as a wrong decision, but I see the sale as the wrong decision. In two words, you um, sum up everything that you've learned about financial freedom in life. Ranbir Kapoor. <laughs> How do you say that? Salesman of the year. Okay. Followed by Tamasha. Followed by Ye Jawani Hai Diwani. And ends with Tu Juti Mein Makkar. Uh, financial freedom in all these four will tell you the trajectory that you have to go through. Okay, here he is as a salesman struggling in a job. Okay, in Tamasha the guy is mentally depressed. Matlab, bahut fatal tha ka bichara. Okay, then you move to Ye Jawani, Hez Diwani, enjoys life, just enjoys life. Okay, but girlfriend is needs a lot of stability, not sure what's happening, happy ending. And you end with two Juti Mamaka, the guy has a Mercedes, he's got a lifestyle that is just. So there's an entire cycle out there here which tells you all you need to know about financial freedom, that it's more emotional, the numbers will fall into the place. Just stick to your plan, keep your mind intact. I don't know if you can top that answer, but two words. <laughs> don't say Alia, but. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Go for it. Black or white. Uh, if you realize finance is the only or very few professions where there's black and white, you don't need to sell. Numbers sell for you. Uh, because if I'm an interior designer, uh, it is subjective. I can say my house is designed well, but somebody could walk in and say it's bad, and there's no way to come on the same page. If it's money, you can precisely say this is the return I generated on this risk. So two people can come on the same page with no time. So if you're in finance, don't sell. If the fact that you want, you are having to sell itself means uh, your finance is weak. I'm sure you guys bring are coming with a bunch of questions. Please bring it on, yeah. Let's go. Who's the first one? Yeah, right. Okay, uh, just introduce yourselves when you ask questions as well, right? Good afternoon, sir. So, sure. uh, my name is Diksha Manani. Okay. Yes, uh, so my question to uh, um, here is for Anupam, sir. My question is, what is the best allocation, asset allocation strategies for today's young generation? So, I think, you know, if you go by the textbook, there's 100 minus age. Then there is a more popular one, 60-40. Can't go wrong with that. These are general bench rules, benchmarks that if you want to follow, they will give you, you know, kind of ideal outcome. But what reality happens will be more dependent on your risk. So I think you have to find your own ideal. But diversification is very important. And you need to understand the difference between diversification and asset allocation. These sound very jargony. But uh, I think that if you get these two rights broadly, don't overcomplicate your decisions. Stick to things that you understand. Right. Simple, but not easy. And okay. consistency, you have to keep working hard at it. The next question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Myself is Vaibo Ribadia. And uh, so here is my question. So there is an economic turmoil going on in the world. Ah. So how do you think it will impact on uh, investing strategies? Oh, fantastic question, right? Yeah. I mean, he's saying, how will the economic turmoil going around in the world impact investment strategies? I think COVID taught everybody to kind of deal with it now. You'll always have an up, you'll have an down, and how these things... In fact, where I would say right now is a much better place than the turmoil that we faced in 2020. And I think your own investment strategy should be factoring in all these risks, all these risk elements. What Firoz just spoke about is defining and understanding your own risk profile is how you will devise your investment strategy. For example, if you're someone who's not risk averse, you will not put 80% of your stocks into equity. If you're someone who wants to buy an iPhone in the next seven months, you will not put your SIP into a smaller mid-cap fund. Okay? So turmoil in investment strategy is defined by how you yourself understand your risk and where you invest your money in. If you're an Indian, it's a great news. Why is it a great news? What is the turmoil? The turmoil is resulted from higher inflation and in turn, unprecedented interest rates in the global economy. You guys are all uh, B-School graduates. What's the 
interest rate in India for the last 10 years average approximately government of India 7% is the average interest what's the current interest 7.2% how close are you for the last 10 year average as close as you could get in US's 10 year average interest rate has been how much zero i guess closer to zero 10 year 10 years interest rates of 10 year average is about close to about 0.81% what is it today five five how many times more 500% more 400% more so five multiple for us how much more 7 to 7.2 is how much percent 3% more so interest rate is business as usual for us for them unki saath pushto ne nahi socha tha ki hoga and so this is the first time when globe is being risk averse everybody is worried for the risk but they're sending money to india incredible so even if you don't get the choices placement at this point in time because companies say you know oh there is a financial crisis and global turmoil just copy paste this answer and say it in your interview <laughs> you all will land that job the next question uh, so i'm sahil the, my question is why is estate planning such an integral and important part of wealth management the word management is a four step process according to us and which has one nuance you have to management is about trying to tie all loose ends if you have to say it in english not in the jargon of four steps any loose end if it is tied properly then you have managed that variable which you are wanting to manage even if there is 2% chance of that risk or something happening you need to tie that loose end and dying is a 100% probability we all have a finite life right not planning a 100% probability event if you have not planned it you can't call it management at all so you can just stop at wealth <laughs> if you want to use the word wealth management you have to tie all loose ends even with 1% probability you have to tie 100% probability event ki aapne loose end tie nahi ki to management ki shabd istemal karne ka haki nahi banta mante ho right so ab so estate planning is a very very important part the second reason why it's very important is where we stay like i just told you that it's a great news that you are in india there's also some bad news for you guys you live in india on estate planning there's a bad news every state government has a different rule for estate planning how ridiculous here every religion has a different rule for estate planning every asset class has a different rule for estate planning movable property ka estate planning rule alag artwork is a movable property the rule is different my house rule is different so three dimensional matrix so oh, matrix pictures dekhi hogi na three dimensional right religion state, state and, and asset class isko ye gutti ko suljhana is not like a one minute job it is like you need i have we have had lawyers from 2009 smartest lawyers and they are still learning <laughs> can you believe it Uh, any other questions these are very interesting yaar yeah. go go ahead good afternoon sir my name is khushi my question is for feroz sir so what were the what were some challenges you foresee on your journey to financial freedom hmm. what are the challenges uh, clarity of thought a uh, very important challenge and clarity of thought doesn't uh, come so easy in a confusing world so that's one challenge a uh, second is uh, Uh, FOMO. Okay, fear of missing out. Uh, people will keep distracting you, staying on the path. See, carving out a strategy is not so difficult. Staying on it is very difficult because you're not you're not uh, in a anda cell of T R J or Arthur Rodgers. इतने लोग बात करेंगे आपसे, वो आपको digress करेंगे आपकी strategy से. So creating a good strategy which is mathematically done like monte carlo he just said so if i have a strategy i would have tested that strategy using monte carlo for the next 1 lakh years of nifty's random variable and then i would have checked what was the worst outcome if the worst outcome is also something which i can withstand then i'll implement the strategy right so you risk is about understanding the worst not about the best So Monte Carlo simulator helps you understand Nifty is a random variable. It can draw paths. A supercomputer can draw two lakh paths. If it drew two lakh years of Nifty, two lakh different. It's not saying one of those 
इट इज लाइक एन एक्सपर्ट ऑन टीवी विल टेल यू यही होगा मॉन्टी कार्लो बोलेगा कि ये सब हो सकता है तैयार रहना तो उसमें से सबसे वर्स्ट वाला निकालना और देखना ये वर्स्ट वाला हुआ तो सो पाओगे अगर सो पाओगे तो वो कर सकते हो अगर नींद नहीं आएगी वर्स्ट वाला देख के सो फर्स्ट इज क्रिएटिंग अ स्ट्रेटजी इन फाइनेंस इज वेरी इजी बिकॉज यू कैन न्यूमरिकली डिवाइज अ स्ट्रेटजी राइट सो यू विल नीड क्लैरिटी ऑफ व्हाट यू विश टू अचीव टू क्रिएट द स्ट्रेटजी um was the next question okay how many of you all have sips and now they've just raised their hand out of how many have health insurance how many of you all have health insurance yeah oh and more people having health insurance than sips usually you know these uh, events these conversations end up in you giving them stock tips or investment tips or ideas i'll ask for three books that one should read all right you obviously i'll ask for two because the first one will be the wisest owl which oh, is your own book <laughs> no 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 yeah. come on so three books that one should definitely read the one that i'm going to say are going to be the obvious ones atomic habits by james clear which i'm sure that a lot of people have already read i you know if i look at um what i would really like the kids out here to do is read fiction read fiction dip you know just do that because this 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 self help thing has just blown up इन टू मतलब अभी तो आप डू दिस शेड डू दैट शेड एंड ऑल दैट टाइम अट डजन हो गया सो आई थिंक फिक्शन ऑलवेज वर्क माई क्लासिक्स विल ऑलवेज बी समिंग लाइक जॉन ग्रिशन द फर्म यू नो थिंग्स लाइक दैट दिस गेट्स यू अलॉट ऑफ एनर्जी लॉट ऑफ इमेजिनेशन सम इन द रॉन्ग डायरेक्शन ऑफ कोर्स बट एनी वे सो दो बी द टू बुक्स एट आई हैव यू नो जस्ट फर्स्ट नॉन फिक्शन दिस फिक्शन Okay, a fiction, a non-fiction, and your own book is what you've uh, spoken about. Well, yeah. my book is no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I think the Victory Project by Saurabh is what I would definitely recommend. Okay, and uh, Firoz, you? Oh, I, I'm not a avid reader. Okay, I've learned, I've read one book, head to toe, if that's one way to describe a book: security analysis and portfolio management. Ten years, I have applied it. No, the second book didn't come out. Right, because Rose is seeking it. So, when will you apply it? एग्जैक्टली exactly. राइट right. एक बुक से कुछ सीखा उसको अब जिंदगी में अप्लाई करने के लिए दो साल लगते हैं फिर दूसरी बुक पढ़ी उसने किसी और डायरेक्शन में खींचा सो एंटरटेनमेंट के लिए सर ने कहा कि फिक्शन पढ़िए दैट्स ग्रेट इफ यूर इफ इट्स प्रोफेशनल लर्निंग फिनेंस लर्निंग स्टिक टू वन अप्लाई दैट एडिकुएटली गेट इन टू द स्किन ऑफ इट एंड देन गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन इज वॉट आई से लास्ट क्वेश्चन लेट्स डू दिस गो फॉर इट Uh, hello sir uh, good afternoon and my name is bhakti kala so my question is uh, the startups uh, are going into a uh, funding venture and uh, the jobs are shedding right now so is it a right choice to st- uh, start a career in uh, the startups good question i think a job between anand rathi and a wealth tech that's one year old good one see the the devil is in the detail to my mind see generic ones don't exist see uh, firstly uh, if if you are going for a startup you will have to understand the clarity of the promoter if you are being interviewed by a startup two important questions is whether the person who's running it has the expertise and has understood the bandwidth of running a company vis-a-vis a division if the guy has that clarity that's a great startup second is how much are they burning right that's so if if there's a company which is uh, profitable in the next 6 months you don't have to worry right how prudent have they been uh, with uh, their uh, costs if they give you a very good salary don't join them that means they would have given the same very good salary to 100 other people okay so a, a startup which negotiates hard with me to give me a small salary i'll be comfortable joining so any stingy startup is whom you should join i mean if it's too good to be true it probably is all right with that we we'll wrap up on this extremely amazing episode of the great indian freedom fest with two eminent leaders of the great indian freedom fest itself uh, leading us to financial freedom and more importantly an extremely enlightened well researched well read audience as well thank you so much for watching we'll come back with more